will continue with uh, uh, giving uh, uh, a physics perspective of the, of the uh, uh, Kirchhoff's uh, current law, which I'll call KCO. Again, I like to uh, call it Kirchhoff's current rule because the fundamental law uh, is the fundamental law of physics, and this is really the application of the, of the law of physics. Uh, let's consider the following. We've got a, a circuit junction, sometimes called a junction or a node, and as a result, this is sometimes called uh, uh, Kirchhoff's uh, junction rule or its node rule. Uh, but a, a junction or a node is a point in the circuit where three or more current carrying wires meet. So here is the, and generally we label those with a letter, either a small a or a capital A, you know, B, C, etc. And uh, there, in general, we'll have uh, currents flowing in and out of the various wires that are that are meeting up here at this uh, at this junction. Uh, just for sake of argument, I'm putting I1 going into A, I2 out away from A, I5 away from A, I4 o away from A, and I3, that doesn't look very good, but it's going in. <laughs> and now then, I'll apply a fundamental law of physics, namely charge conservation. In fact, in time delta T, I know that uh, all the charge that goes into the junction A has to be equal to that that leaves it. We don't have any accumulation here. If we had accumulation, then we'd have a capacitor because they have capacitance, the capability of, of holding charge. But in this case, uh, we don't. So there's no accumulation of charge at this A. And that means that everything that goes into it has got to come out of it in the time delta T. And uh, just to remember, uh, I is delta Q delta T, and so I could solve this delta Q is I delta T. But uh, if you look at this, what I do is everything going in, I've got I1 going in and I3 going in, so delta Q I1 is the amount of charge that comes into A in time delta T on wire 1. Delta, uh, delta Q3 is the amount of charge that comes in along wire 3. And then the other two are leaving, and so this is the total on the out. Delta Q2 uh, is on wire 2, delta Q4 on wire 4, and delta Q5 on wire 5. And then I use this to convert those uh, in terms of currents. I1 delta T is delta Q1. I3 delta T is delta Q3. Again, just using this expression. I2 delta T is delta Q2. I4 delta T. I5 delta T is Q5. And it's the same interval of time, so I can divide that out all the way across. And I get I1 plus I3 is equal to I2 plus I4 plus I5. And then you got a choice. You either take these over to this side or you take these over to the other side. I usually take these over to this side. And when I do that, I'll get I1. When I bring this over to this side, it'll become a minus I2. I'll get a plus I3. When I bring I4 and I5, they'll pick up a minus sign. And then I get, uh, effectively, a demonstration of Kirchhoff's uh, uh, current law. The algebraic sum of the currents, IK, coming into the node, summed over all the currents, in this case five, but it could be as many as you want. Uh, I have to assign uh, a sign convention, and uh, I'll assume uh, that we use plus if it's coming into the uh, to the node. That would be like I1 and I3, or and minus if it's going out of the node. Now, pretty obviously, uh, there's nothing fundamental here. If somebody else could have gone this direction, taken I1 and I2, and used the opposite sign convention to what we're using, uh, but I I generally like to use. Uh, uh, current going into a node or into a junction is positive. Current going out is negative. Well, that leads us to Kirchhoff's uh, current rule. Here. Uh, at any junction, the algebraic sum of the current entering the node must be zero. And again, I, I simply write it in this form. And uh, the plus or minus I assign by looking at it, uh, uh, we'll see plus if it's entering and minus if it's leaving. 
let's use that uh, in a context of resistors in parallel. Here's a couple of resistors, uh, a current I coming in, and once it hits this junction, it gets split up. Here I've got three wires connected to it, so there is a, it's a node or a junction. Uh, so I get an I1 going along the top, an I2 going along the bottom. I get another node over here, and they rejoin and come back out to be the same current I that uh, enters at A as leaves at B. And uh, by uh, Kirchhoff's uh, 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 current law, KCO, I, uh, I certainly have uh, uh, at either one of these nodes, I've got I entering, and I've got I1 and I2 leaving, so I would uh, the sum here would be I minus I1 minus I2, but then when I take those over to the other side, I get uh, the current in has got to be equal to the current out. Well, I can use our voltage uh, across a resistor uh, to compute the voltage drop from A to B along the top path or along the bottom path. Along the top path, going in this direction. Again, I know the current flow is I1. Current always flows from high to low, so I can mark the plus and minus sign. I get I1 R1 plus or minus uh, uh, that quantity. And the last sign I hit is negative, so I choose the negative. If you like, you can uh, rearrange this, solve this for I1, so I get the current I1 is the voltage drop from A to B divided by R1. Uh, likewise, uh, on the bottom path, from A to B, the voltage drop from A to B is, again, plus or minus uh, current times resistor. Current is I2, resistance is R2. I got the current I2 going in this direction across the resistor, so plus and minus. Again, current always flows from high to low potential, so that uniquely defines the high and low side. And uh, as I move from A to B along the bottom, uh, I last sign I hit across that resistor is minus, so I give the minus sign. And again, I could choose uh, that. Uh, I could choose to solve this equation here for I2. It's just minus delta uh, V A to B over R2. And now then, let's plug these two results up here, the result that came from our uh, uh, Kirchhoff current law at the node. So I1 is this. I2 is this. So I put those uh, in here. They have a common factor, which is the voltage drop, delta V A B. They've also got a minus. I'll pull that out. What I'm left with is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 for the, the current I that was coming through here. Uh, well, what I claim is this is exactly like a single resistor. If I could have a single resistor connected between the same A and B up here instead of these two resistors, then... Uh, uh, the current flowing in this direction, this side's the positive, this side's the negative. Delta V A to B in this case is the current flowing through it, R, uh, I, times the resistance, uh, R sub P. Okay. And the last sign I hit's the negative, so it's negative. And I could solve this for I, which is delta V A B over R P. And uh, provided I choose the uh, uh, the, I want everything equivalent, in this case, that the voltage drop and the currents are the same here as the, as the one up here. The voltage drop from A to B and the total current is the same. Then uh, I can set the total current here as minus delta V, VA, VB over RP. And that's got to be equal to minus delta V to, to B here, 1 over R1 to R1 over R2. Uh, the voltage is, is exactly the same because I start and end at the same points. Negative signs will uh, go away. And so I get that for these resistors in parallel, I can get the equivalent resistance, RP. The reciprocal of the, of the equivalent resistance is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And uh, one can... Uh, 
I do this, uh, uh, extend this in general. So if I have n resistors uh, in parallel, then I could replace all of those by a single resistor, RP, would have exactly the same effects in the circuits. The current entering and the current leaving would be exactly the same. The, uh, uh, the voltage drop across it would be exactly the same, and so I could uh, replace uh, uh, all of these resistors by a single resistor, provided I choose the RP to be uh, the, the reciprocal of RP to be the sum of the reciprocals for uh, resistors in parallel.